this route, which is sort of, we've made it quieter. So it's a good example of you not, and certainly further down, how we filtered the street. So that's yeah. a good example of how we filtered street stretch, you make it quieter and right. safer by taking traffic volume down. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then further up, we've got a much bigger main road yeah. that sort of basically forms one of our spine sort yeah. of cycleway networks, which yeah. is fully segregated yeah. and new as well. Yeah. And then maybe we can come back along that um, join up here, and then maybe we could cross over the river and we go down embankment, and you can see, we'll do a bit, you know, if you haven't been to London, for, then I can show a few sites. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Yeah. By sure. bike. Yeah, let's do it. By yeah. bike. All right, hey, this is John with the Active Towns Channel, and I'm super delighted to have Will Norman with me. Will. Hey, thank John. You, uh, thank you so much for meeting us. Yeah. Oh, absolute pleasure. I enjoyed our chat a few months ago. Really looking forward to it. Well, now, now you can see if I was telling the truth or not. That's right. <laughs> exactly. The proof is always in the pudding. The proof is always in the pudding. <laughs> now, earlier you had mentioned uh, down this way there were some uh, treatments that uh, uh, happened during uh, yeah. the pandemic, right? So this was, uh, this down here, I'll show you in a minute. It's okay. got some temporary build outs of, um, of pavings, uh, mm. wider pavements, as well as a traffic filter. Right. And that was, during the pandemic, it created more space for people using the shops, yeah. restaurants, but also on the, on the footways. But one of the, it was, became so popular and yeah. actually had a big impact on some of those local businesses, yeah. there was basically a call to keep it. Yep. Yeah. So I'll show you where, so we made that permanent, yeah. although we haven't gone back and done all the re-engineering of everything, because it's working quite nicely at the moment. At some point, when yeah. we've got a bigger checkbook, then that'll right. be the plan. Brilliant, let's go do it. Let's go. All right, so this is the cut. This is, a, you can see the temporary build footways here. Yeah. So that is using rubber curbs and infill particularly around that station, that's a busy tube station okay. in Russia. So that was creating more space around the tube station during the pandemic. But what you see down here, if you look, see where these planters are. Here, you can see how wide the road was. Right. Yep. We narrowed that, it created this more space. The restaurants are delighted because they've got more foot, you know, they've got all this space. Right. It's, not, it's not eating out time and it's raining. So you can see it's not sort of packed, but you can see the difference that happened. Yeah. And then from a cycling perspective, this is great because we put in what's here. Right. You can stop here and you can see the signs there. So basically you've got a modal filter. So that's except loading. So businesses to still get access. Um, yeah. But then you're essentially created a much quieter street. This used to be really, we've got a mainland rail station up here. So Waterloo stations up here. And it used to be really busy with um, traffic coming through, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing this sort of cut through. Right. Um, there are plenty of bigger roads around which that traffic can use, but the transformation of this street's been lovely, and you can see, you know, there, m there are many more busy cafes and what have you down there than, than there used to be. So again, so this is so this is an example again of where we use, you know, we can't we haven't got the space or the capacity to put bike lanes on every main road, but this is an example of again making one of the quieter streets quieter. Right. So, you know, for me and you, yeah. this, is, this is ideal. It's, you know, it's a nice bike route. It's not, it's not you know, it, it, it connects it up. It joins part of the network. And you can see how, yeah, you can see people using it. So what we'll do is we'll take a left up here. Okay. And you can see sort of slightly different infrastructure that we've got here. These should give us early releases, um, so Obviously, for, from a cycling perspective, it's nice just to get ahead of the traffic. Yep, there it is. Yep, there it is. But we're going to turn left here. And here you go. So, as I was saying, yeah, on the busier roads, having this, um, having this protected bike lanes are essential. Right. Do you think we should put on our raincoats? I reckon this might. Right. Should we pause under these trees? Okay, we had an, uh, uh, a wardrobe change. Kit stop. Yep, got yep. our, uh, got got our uh, rain jackets and, on. And in typical fashion, as soon as we put the rain jackets on, it yeah. stops raining. It stops raining. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Again, that combination of that filter back there, right. which has stopped a lot of the rat running traffic that would use this as a cut through. Oh, right. It's got a yeah. filter back there on the next street, and there's another filter up here by these traffic lights. Yeah. And the combination of those has actually made this largely access only for most right. people. Again, you know, pretty easy, cheap way of, yeah. um, of making it, you know, feel pretty safe for cyclists. Yeah. 
Now that two-way cycle track that we were just on, yeah. looks like it's been around for a little while. Yeah, so that was introduced. That one got put in in 2015. Okay. Um, and so there were two, I think, two major pieces of infrastructure. That's cycleway six, and then there's cycleway three that's east-west along embankment. Right. Uh, that, those two were really the sort of kick-started the changes in London. Right. Uh, to actually take cycle infrastructure seriously. Yeah. Um, and, and that's sort of been the, some of the building blocks from now on. Yeah. I see uh, the uh, bike share station here. Yep, we have, uh, so these are the Santander cycles. This is run by the city. Uh, we have just, we've been a bit slow on the uptake on this largely because of the infrastructure costs and financial challenges post-pandemic, but we've got e-bikes as part of that scheme now. Oh, fabulous. It's, it's been around, well, 12 years, I think, that scheme, and, and it's got the, the normal bikes. Right, right. Um, oh, they're digging up the street at the moment, so we might have to just uh, walk, up, walk our bikes through this okay. little bit. The e-bikes are being used five times more than the, um, the usual bikes. Yeah. And uh, so we've just bought another, sort of, I think, 1,400 of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've just, I think one of the things we're learning is that you put in the infrastructure and, you know, that old film, build it and they'll come. Right. But not everybody comes. And so we're doing quite a lot of work on how do we, how do, we pr do more promotion and encouragement that sits alongside the infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And so we just done a, launched a thing, Cycle Sundays, which is an idea of how do you so get people to, people, all those bus, uh, all those bikes that are sort of hibernating in the sheds right. <laughs> or on balconies, yeah? yeah how yeah. do you get people to dust them off and go for a bike ride? Yeah. And so we've got this program working with partners and one of the things is you can get free use of the bike hire ah. on a Sunday at the moment. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so hopefully that's proving pretty popular. But look, this, this, this is interesting. This is, this is an older bike route right. where we've made some modifications by putting in this. This was largely one of the old ones, which was largely lines. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But you can see where we started putting in some of the temporary, uh, or sort of, it's not temporary, but light, uh, light compared yeah. with what we were on before. Right, right. You can see the sort of, uh, you know, this is much cheaper, much easier to put in. Yeah, a quick and build. A quick build, exactly. Yeah. 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 And certainly robust in the sense exactly. that it's bricks and but, concrete, but, but at it's the same, not it's quick the same build. as having a whole scheme. Yeah. It doesn't quite add that same level of complexity. But you can see, you know, there's a gas station or petrol station there, as we call it. Yeah. You know, there's loading here. It's a bit more of a to do a sort of full scheme here would be would be more costly and yeah. expensive. Yeah. So that's you know one on the list at the moment. Right. Right. And this is uh, quite the little plaza area we're rolling through right now. Exactly. Again, a change from changing the bike lane, but you know, you can't just um, we can't just do it as bike lanes. You've got to look at the whole public realm, haven't you? You've got to make it nice for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you do stuff, so you want to make it. You want to do things like that too. Yeah. So this is a bit different. This has got a you're with traffic going this way, but you've got a, yeah. a raised track going the other. You can see the, some of the space constraints we're dealing with. And while this, this bit isn't quite medieval, London is a medieval city in its right, spots. Right, and, right. Uh, you know, those sort of Parisian boulevards that Napoleon knocked down and uh, yeah. put up, we don't, we don't have them. Well, this is brilliant. I love that little treatment. You've got the contraflow lane yeah. with the raised curb to it. Just makes it, you know, exactly. that much and, more and comfortable. Sort of, exactly, and it's just think it's, it's a, been using it rather than a one size fits all. Yeah. It's actually what works for that space. Yeah. You know, and again up here, this was part of the same cut through one bollard. Right. Yep, yeah. and the sign, and again makes yeah. a difference. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I always hear comments about oh bollards, you know, in the way, you know, cyclists are going to hit it. But my point is always, you know, from a North American perspective, yeah. if you don't put a bollard there, the car will go there. Exactly. And so exactly. It, it's, it's a trade-off. Yes, the person oh. on the bike needs to pay attention. Yep. But, and, and not hit the bollard, but. Well, frankly, sometimes <laughs> even if you do put a bollard there, the car will still try and go there. <laughs> yes. So I, I put money on the fact that at some point down this ride, yeah. we'll find one that's been hit by a truck. Yes.
but you know, we we still need our businesses to work. You know, right. Every yes. for our, for every you know. Yeah. What would Brit London be without the pubs? If pubs with no beer. Well, the guy's be, getting a know, delivery right exactly. there, and look how narrow this is. This yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. Exactly. So the the deliveries can get there. And yep. Was that bollard that we passed? Was that one a removable one? You could. You can remove it if you. Okay. Um, I'm not sure actually. That one wasn't. The previous okay. one was where the yeah. gas works. Were, yeah. Those were removable. Yeah. And the fire guys have the key. You know to. Right. To be able to get through if they need to. Right. Frankly, some of those those fire trucks will take out one of those bollards anyway if they really need to. If they really need to get to yeah. it, yes. They're not shy. They shouldn't. They, <laughs> they, I hope not. If they, if they were coming to put my house a fire out in my house, I'd be yes. happy. So we've got a big hospital here. So there's a lot of sort of ambulance and patient traffic here. Yeah. Um, but again, you can see the sort of the by the, the, the directional track here. Yeah. And I'm noticing a lot of signage for the, the routes. Yes, well, that, if you, without the sign, you want on street. So oh, here we're going here. So you can see here, you want on street. Yeah. Like the theory, and I, I, I hope we'd already get it right, but I can't vouch for everywhere, is that every time there's a turn, yeah, yeah you get a pretty clear indication. Right. And then every so often you've got a sort of a bit of a confirmation you're on the right, right way. So you can see these ones. I'm going to turn down here. So this is the old. You can see this is the, you know, the river's just up there. This is old docks area. Uh, you can see a lot of the architecture, old warehouses, right. now convert, largely converted into housing and offices. Here we go. We're going to go down this way. Ah, and here's the leather, hide, and wool exchange building. No longer uh, exchanging wool, yeah. leathers, or hides, I don't think, but yeah. uh, <laughs> leather exchange. The but leather exchange is there. I don't know. If, uh, I, don't know if, uh, I, I grew up on. on a, I grew up on a sheep farm, so oh, I, so I, I used to raise wool. Okay. Yes. <laughs> your, your ancestors might well have ended up here. Actually, yeah, I think. But look, yeah, you can see the sort of buildings that we've got. Again, using the quieter back streets. Yeah. Um, So this is, we'll stop here for a second. So we, previously, we, we, um, we had a chat about the docked um, bike hire that we've yes. got. So that's the yeah. city's, uh, that's run by the city, managed by the city. It's the traditional docked system. Right. It works pretty well in central London where there are massive constraints on, you know, you can see the constraints on space. Yes. And we, but there's no, we've got a e bike uh, we've got various e dockless e bike schemes okay. and dockless uh, e scooter schemes. Right. One of the challenges we have here, and I don't know if it's the same, other countries presumably the same, but quite often the technology advances quickly, but there's a lag between the technological right. advance and the regulatory uh, pace. Yes. And one of the challenges we have is that cities don't have the powers to really regulate the dockless bikes. And right. I love e-bikes, yeah. and I love dockless e-bikes. I think are really great as well, yeah. but not when they're scattered all over the pavements and right. getting in people's way. So yeah. one of the things we're doing at the moment is putting in these painted uh, areas, yeah. and then uh, getting a GPS system. Yep, right. in so they almost create virtual docking bays. Yeah. And uh, fortuitously, it looks like this one's working. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, and then here's yeah. the other thing that we're bringing in, is that as cycling's booming, if you think about living in some of these apartments that we're around now, there isn't necessarily the space for people to securely store their bikes. Right. And so that's why the residential bike hangers are so important. Yeah. And I think they've been, the first one of those came in about 2013, 2014, we've seen a massive growth in those. Now, I think they're enough, but something like enough space for 29,000 bikes parked wow. across London in those. Yeah. But we need so many more. The mayor set us a target for another 42,000 spaces. Right. Um, yeah. uh, and um, you know, frankly, we can't keep up with demand. Yeah. Um, they are, they're, not without, they're very popular, but they're not without controversy because for every time you put one of those in, you take out a parking space. But yeah. my argument is one of those will sit, uh, fit six bikes. Right. Yep. Yeah. And that means these, these apartments here, I've got a whole load of bikes uh, easily available off the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good return on investment right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. And they're just, with the, the, the endless wait, waiting lists, our struggle is keeping up with the demand. Yeah. One of the things that I'm noticing too, I have noticed uh, these all around the city uh, already today, um, is we're, we're starting to see the demand for 
uh, larger such structures yep. to be able to handle some of the bigger cargo bikes. And yeah, cargo bikes so, and family bikes. We, and family bikes, yeah. So I'm really pleased. We've got two things going on. Um, we've now launched the first on-street uh, sort of residential uh, hangars for cargo bikes and uh, family bikes. So Great. there aren't many around at the moment, but yeah. there's the first one just across the river in Westminster, a bit, actually a bit further inland. Um, but then what we've also got is a, a couple of boroughs have started doing rental uh, cargo bikes. Right. So you basically, you log in on an app, right. uh, that's got a fancy sort of machinery on the, right. on the thing. Yeah. You can rent it for a couple of hours and, uh, and, and give it, because quite often I think these, you know, these are often sort of gateway drugs, aren't they? You have a go right. on some of this stuff. You right. have a go yeah. on a bike, you get used to it. Yeah, yeah we find yeah. that with our hire system. People try it out on the on the on the rental bikes and yeah. then think actually I might I want to get my own bike. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. we're finding the same thing with the cargo bikes. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's great. Yeah. Turn. Turning right and then just straight over here, you can see the signs. This again, so this is an example where this again is um, a this is a pre-COVID infrastructure actually. Um, you can see how sort of willing. But again, it's a simple bollard, but this is a really busy shopping street and the weekends they have markets here. After work, these places are really busy with people having drinks and yeah. hanging out after work. So this is a good example of another one of the sort of, it's not so much a formal cycle route, people use it and it's good for cycling, but it's actually right. just designed as a, uh, yeah. you know, as a, a street for people, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to see, especially in the heart of the big city here, you know, some of these traffic calm streets, yeah. you know, and like and you said, they're not- And with cargo bikes being oh, yeah, used. Boom. So that's, the, yeah. that store's got its own cargo bike. Yeah. It's a great, um, sorry, I interrupted you, but yeah. I was just gonna say that, I know where that's come from. So there's a, um, the businesses in this area form together what's called a business improvement district, right. where the businesses basically club together and lobby, fund, do a whole load of different activities. We're gonna switch over onto this little track here okay. to get through the junction. Right. Um, uh, and so, one of the initiatives the London Bridge Business Improvement District has focused on is cargo bikes, yep. And pushing that and making the case for those for businesses. And it's brilliant seeing how many have actually taken them up on that, uh, you know, on the, on the idea. Yeah. I think that's a really brilliant point that you made there was that with the business improvement districts, pushing to have the cargo bikes, you know, adopting that, that really takes some of that pressure off of the street space, having those large delivery vans, um, or if the, the larger de delivery vans still need to come, you know, you, you shorten that window of, of exactly. delivery time. Exactly, it gives you much more flexibility. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we reckon, the study that we did, we did a, um, a cargo bike strategy actually to help push this out. And one of the bit of the research on that showed that actually in some parts of London, 14% of the vans could very easily be replaced by right. cargo bikes. And you know, big, this is no longer the world of little niche operators. The right. big boys, you know, DHL, Amazon, all the, all the big logistics companies um, are, are, are showing up in numbers now. Right. Not two reasons. One, you know, it, it helps to add to their environmental cred credentials. But ultimately, it's down to money. It's cheaper. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, one of the big challenges for delivery drivers around here is finding space to park. Yep. Yes. And a, a cargo bike, you can just tuck it in. Yep. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it makes it much easier and yeah. just saves an awful lot of time, let alone the traffic and everything else you see. It seems to me that uh, the business improvement districts and the city itself could also, you know, help facilitate that by having uh, designated uh, cargo bike delivery parking zones, you know, when you, you get to that level of, you know, spaces of premium and yeah. uh, making sure that the cargo bikes aren't, yeah, aren't uh, gumming up the cycle tracks and all that. Yeah, that's, that's right. The, uh, but I think the other thing that is really important in that is actually having the, um, the mo sort of little mobility hubs uh, because yes. You obviously, you know, the cargo bikes don't get their, their good, they're not magically down, but you know, are they? They come in on trucks, right. yep. yep. And those trucks need the hubs to yes. unload and sort it out. Exactly, yeah. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. We talked about the hospital. I mentioned that hospital back there, which right. is Guy's and St. Thomas's. Yeah. We had a good chat with them. Um, and they were having, you know, dozens of vans bringing their gear in to the hospital and I was saying for my perspective that adds to 
traffic congestion yeah, and pressure. And also, we all know big vehicles are a, a bigger danger to, to vulnerable road users. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Let, let's not create more patients, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is all about saving the NHS. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, we're going this way. Um, so, uh, but what they did was a bit of a sort of old school time and motion study. Yeah. And what they found was a number of nursing staff that were being taken up by um, basically helping unload these vans and moving the stuff to the right bit of the hospital. Yeah. So they bought Bill an outside of Lunttown distribution centre, yeah? Basically that does all that, sorts it all out into the right trolleys. Yeah. Massively reduced the number of uh, vans coming in, yeah? yeah? yeah. And saved from their perspective, yeah. save really valuable nursing time yeah. so people could actually get on with their jobs. Yeah. We'll come back to the hospital because I want to mention something else, but I want to address the uh, facility that we're on now. This is uh, rather nice, obviously a busier street here and a nice, wide, generous uh, two-way cycle track. Uh, looks like it's been around for a little while. This one, this one's newer. Uh, so when did we put this in? 2018, 20, 2018, just yet. And so this is, but this is part of an ongoing project. So there's actually a bit of this that's being in, into construction now or we just might just finish that bit of construction. It goes a long way down, all the way down to Greenwich and beyond. So this is, you know, we're talking going all the way out to the edge of, um, you know, the edge of, well, certainly the sort of, uh, the sort of cent well, way out into the, out, out of London along this. On the, and so we're going here southeast across this, uh, along the city as we go now. Fabulous. So getting back to the hospital, uh, one of the other things that I was going to mention to you is that uh, one of the pet peeves that I have yeah. about hospitals and medical centers and zones like that is too often they're so incredibly car centric. Yeah. And so, you know, seeing one that features, you know, a nice quiet street and some cycle facilities going right up to the door is another brilliant, brilliant thing. Because it's so good. And yeah, then, you know, not everybody is going to arrive by car or yeah. ambulance. Yeah. Many people, including workers, might yeah. want to arrive by bike. Exactly. Um, and you know, that why I recognize central London is a bit different to bits of outer London, which have got bits more of a suburban feel, but where you have got those central areas, yeah. it's really key. There's a children's hospital, Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, very central, but they've been doing some brilliant work. Their doctors have been really, really advocating for the um, ultra low emission zone, cleaning up the air yes. in London. Yeah because they were seeing just how many kids have got, uh, got asthma and the impact that that has on their lungs and stunted growth in their lungs. Yeah. And one of the things they've done is done a sort of post, using, the, using some of that big data, they've done a postcode analysis. So it will show up on the pe patient's notes now, right. what from their postcode, what the air quality is like in that neck of the woods. Yeah prompting the physicians to actually engage in a conversation with the parents yeah. about some of the issues that we're facing. Because I think all too often, if we're really preachy, yep, yeah. and it's the usual brigade yeah. of people sort of talking about why all this stuff matters, right. Yep, right. It, it, becomes, you know, it becomes very easy to, not to ignore, but to sort of pigeonhole that group. Yeah. Whereas actually having, a new, you know, having doctors talking about it, having business people talk about it, having teachers talk about it, having a raft of different people championing this stuff across the community, yeah. I think it, it's needed, isn't it, to get yeah. that, uh, to get the sort of message, you know, to help communicate that message. Really, I think to your point, is it's more than just, you know, quote unquote, the health benefits. And it's more than just, oh, this is good for, for people walking and biking. Yeah. It's also just delightful for, you know, people living there and people who have businesses there. Yeah because the quality of life is just so but I think that's much kind more of why is rich. I totally agree. One of the pieces I think that we all too often miss, we can sort of get, as campaigners or deliverers of this work and champions of it, we can get very sort of um, bogged down in, in some of the detail here. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, what are we actually trying to work towards? And you know, from a mayor, the mayor's perspective, all those things are vitally important, but they add up to a bigger picture. And that, yeah. that bigger picture is how do we keep London to be a successful city, yeah. a city where people want to come and work, people yeah. want to come and study, people want to come and raise their family, because right. that will drive investment, that yeah. will drive, which again will then make it more impressive, imp improve it. You know, if you've got jobs here, if you're going to invest money in a city and a business, you want to do it somewhere where people feel safe and secure yeah. and, and happy. 
Let's, so, pa let's well, pause and talk about this little area right here. Okay, yeah. Look at this. This so is this, just delightful. So this is the yeah. Rotherhithe Roundabout. This is an yeah. old tunnel. Down there, you can see just behind the trees, behind that cyclist in the, in the tree, yeah. you can see that, that goes under the tunnel. It's a piece of Victorian infrastructure. Yeah. Um, but this roundabout used to be awful for cyclists. Yeah. You know, it was a collision hotspot. Yeah. Sadly, fatalities in this space. Right. Yep. Right. But now you've got the cycle lanes working all the way through here. But also vitally, you know, this is something that's really high up on our agenda now, yes. is how do we keep our city from uh, how do we protect our city from the impact of climate change? You know, it's no longer, we, we can't just stop climate change, yeah. it's happening, it's too late for that. Yeah. How do we make sure that it is, um, that, that it is, so this idea of creating a sponge city, right. I love all this stuff. It's yeah. sort of, you know, it's, it, it, we should probably get out of the cycle route, shouldn't we? Um, yeah. but you can see, at least if we get off to the side. <laughs> yeah. We're not Amsterdam but, level yet here. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. We'll wide. get there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, the, the whole idea underneath here, you've got all that drainage space and it collects that water, it stores it and, and then ultimately keeps the rivers cleaner because it's, it, it, saves, it, it increases that lag time for the water to access there. And that's exactly what uh, impressed me as we were rolling up to this space was seeing all of this greenery that was in, in, in place because you know too often cities would just be like, oh yeah, all right, m maybe put some pavers over the top or concrete over yeah. the top the ability to soak all this up is well i think that's one of the things that's changed you know i'd be i won't lie to you when we start when i sat out on this yeah. this stuff would be the first thing that would be value engineered out of a scheme yeah. you know how can yeah. we how can we save some money yeah. oh well let's not do this stuff yeah? yeah now the ethos is well rather than should we put this stuff in it's like well why isn't this stuff going in why isn't there more going in how do we put it in you know yeah. and setting targets for the teams etc cetera, etc cetera, means that this is again at forefront of people's minds yeah yeah, I love it. So uh, re remind the audience, how long have you been in your position? So, I, so I've been uh, doing this job for a little over seven years now. Okay. So I came in in 20, well, I was appointed in 2016. Um, yeah. yeah. In that time, you have had to have just seen such an amazing transformation in not only the infrastructure, just, but just the excitement uh, in the energy around using the bicycle for everyday trips. Yeah, well, I think those two reflect each other. You know, it's a bit of a virtuous circle, isn't it? The, when you've got that energy, there's more pressure for people to deliver the safe infrastructure. Right. And the more safe infrastructure you get, the more people who want to cycle, therefore the more people have got that energy and the more demand there is for the infrastructure. So, yeah. you know, I suppose what we need to do is create that sort of, that system yeah. that sort of drives the political support demonstrates just the change and you know yeah we all know that everyone feels better when they're biking now it's hard putting this stuff into existing cities you know everybody who's involved in this knows that you know technically we've just come across a busy junction if that junction if the timings of those lights are too long then the traffic backs up too far you get safety problems somewhere else and yeah. you spread pollution and and, uh, and people sort of you know, if these schemes don't work from a traffic network perspective, then it's even harder to win that war, uh, that sort of battle of convincing people that this stuff is, is so important. Yeah. And so it is, you know, from a technical and political perspective, none of this stuff is easy. I, I, one of the things I loved, I took a visit over to Amsterdam a while ago in a moment when, you know, there was quite a lot of backlash and, uh, and the normal nonsense happening. Yeah. Went over to Amsterdam and the guy showed me around in Amsterdam and it was very reassuring that even Amsterdam gets the backlash and the, oh, you know, yeah. and the arguments and I, I just felt a little better about myself. Yeah. What time is rush hour typically? Uh, it'll kick in around five o'clock, I reckon. Okay. Depends, slightly different, different parts of the city. I think where you're in Waltham Forest, you'll see quite a lot of, um, see the traffic's beginning to build at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the car your, traffic is. Yeah. Not yet really the, the bicycle traffic. No, not but, yet. The bike traffic yeah. will come a bit afterwards, I think. Yeah. So the car traffic tends to be a bit earlier. Yeah. Um, because one of the challenges is, you know, a lot of people come in early if they're, you know, driving early if they're to avoid rush out, what have you, do their day and then go, go, back, uh, go back a bit earlier too. Yeah. Obviously one of the challenges, as you had just mentioned, is is that uncomfortable sort of transitionary period when you get your infrastructure in, but people still have that habit of driving into the city. Um, and hopefully with improved infrastructure like this, 
uh, that is, is safer for all ages and abilities, we'll see some people who have that choice yeah. start to say, you know what? It's a beautiful day. Why not give it a ride, you know, yeah. and, and, and not have to drive today? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, actually, but there's, there's the infrastructure, but there also needs to be a few sticks as well. You've got the carriage, you've got the sticks. Up so, here, you'll see a big C on the blue sign up here. Yeah. That's a C for the congestion charge. Ah. Yep. So that was the congestion charge, which London implemented, God, what, 20 years ago now. Right. New York just failed to implement. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that was a, was a seismic moment in terms of uh, traffic in the city. And exactly to your point, that was largely around shifting people from cars coming into the center of the city to public transport. Right. Uh, and it made it, you know, as a, as a student at the time, and you could tell the difference on the day it came in, it, you know, it just changed the city. Right. So those, those measures are really important, as well as the, the, sort of the carrots um, of, 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 the, of the decent infrastructure. Right. But now we've got things like this in. Yeah. What's wonderful is then, as I mentioned, the Cycle Sundays, Last, last week, couple of weeks ago, we had Ride London, which Ride London, big cycle event. We had uh, 50, 60,000 families doing a traffic-free route, a bit like a, you know, big cycle via. Yeah. They go, you know, people went past Big Ben, past Buckingham Palace, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And um, one of the things for that is, is like, it's encouraging, they, they led rides from all the different parts of London. Yeah. So for people who are unfamiliar with the routes, they can give them a go right. and then have a reason for getting there and show up to sort of traffic free central London. Right. And you know, the, one of the loveliest conversations I heard over here there was like someone just going, God, it's so easy. I'm just going to do this on Monday. Yeah. And thankfully, Monday was a sunny day. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, the day after was. And hopefully, that person is now thinking, actually, I might as well just bike in. Yeah. Well, and I get that's the, the big point, right, of having these special events is to you know, help people sort of reimagine what their city is for and what the streets are for. Ex yeah, exactly, exactly. It's sort of, you know, the events are important themselves, but it's part of an overall, it's that conversation that needs to change yeah. around how do we, how do we want to live? Yeah. It must well, take that's... ages to, uh, to, um, to edit all this stuff. Uh, it's a, good, much... it's a good, good thing this is my full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make any money at it, but it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you make change, though, you I know, that, as we go back to that point around storytelling, it's just so important. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is this I hear from people from all around the world that they're inspired by the conversations, by the conversations that I'm having yeah, and, that, and the, the videos that I shoot. It really, you know, so. people talk about it. It really matters, I yeah. think. It's like and, and we all have a responsibility. You've got to do the stuff, but you've got to tell people about it and yeah. explain why and the challenges, and it's not easy. Right, yeah. we're going to, should we pull over to the side just here okay. by this pub, and I'll explain what we'll do next. Okay. Right, so we've got Tower Bridge up here, oh, yeah. which is an absolute nightmare for cyclists. Okay. Yeah, it is really, really hard, and it's very narrow. Yeah. Um, and you can see the thing. So we're gonna, we're gonna. If you're to right with you, we're gonna brave it. Okay. Yep. All right. So there you can see. There's the city. Yeah. Tower of London. Got a Tower of London, the River Thames, HMS Belfast down there. You know, all the sites. All the sites. All available by bike. I was just in Cincinnati yeah. uh, filming, and they had a couple historic bridges there. Yeah. Nowhere near as old as this, of course, but yeah. um, one of them has been uh, transformed into a bike head yeah. facility. Uh, several others have uh, bike lanes that have been added to it. Yep. Yeah. So we've got so we've got a real challenge is that from here, westward through London, there are increasingly more bridges. Yeah. Because the, the, it's the older city, the river is narrower, yeah. and it's not a working port. Right. Whereas from this area up to going up to the river, it's wider, it's yeah. tidal, it's a working port, 
Putting bridges in in East London yeah. is very expensive and technically challenging because right. you're still going to let the ships come through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that means that whereas most of the growth in London has happened in East London, yeah. sort of relatively recently, so there's a dearth of river crossings for for everybody. So this bridge is particularly busy because it's the last of decent river crossing right. uh, on, uh, as a bridge for, yeah. for, for London, basically. Yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of tunnels further down. Yeah. Further that way, there's more opportunity to actually look at some of the bridges. Right. Again, still a constraint. It's the biggest sort of separation barrier in the city. Right. So at the moment, looking at how do we put more bike lanes in rather than necessarily make them all uh, walking, cycling only. Right. Um, but I think there's an inevitability that some of them Particularly as they get older, yeah. You know, as trucks get bigger and uh, heavier, yeah. You know, now they, 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 they were built for another era, right? Yeah. Head straight over, so we want to okay. move slightly right. Follow me. Okay. Here we go. You can breathe a sigh of relief now. <laughs> Uh, we're going to turn left down here. Um, but we're seeing that's one of the challenges we face as a city is that we've got a challenge with big trucks, yeah. the, the, you know, big things like this thing up, up ahead. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's a big problem. Um, but where we're getting the biggest growth is on the small light commercial vehicles, the vans. Yeah. Um, and that's where, you know, that's, that's where you're getting a lot of people using those more. Yeah. Not just for goods, but servicing. So people right. going to fix elevators, and, yes. you know, all, all, the, all the maintenance that needs to happen. Yeah. As we pause to do the, the loud motorcycles, motorcycles, the roaring of the motorcycles. The motorcycles. Um, talk a little bit about noise pollution and the city. I know in the Netherlands they're really being intentional about trying to bring motor vehicle noise down within the cities and there's all sorts of regulations uh, to ensure that if they do any new roads or if they yeah. do any changes to the roadways, um, those types of things are being taken into consideration and obviously loud vehicles like those motorcycles and occasionally loud trucks and other vehicles. Is there anything like that in London? That so one of the, there are regulations. I think one of the yeah. challenges is enforcing those regulations. Yeah. Um, one of the things we have a network of uh, traffic cameras that sort of uh, enforce speed limits or no turns or areas where you know you can't stop and that sort of things. Um, the uh, the other thing we have. We've just, they've just started coming in, is um, noise cameras. Well, noise, they're not cameras, they are cameras. They monitor the noise and take a picture of the thing. So where you've got uh, loud vehicles that are exceeding noise pollution levels, there is a now a mechanism of actually enforcing that. There are a couple in the city at the moment. Yeah. This is something that we need more. Oh, have a look here, this is interesting. We've just put in, have a move forward a bit. See, there's a wheelchair and there's one on the, uh, Oh, it just switches. So there's a green, we have green men. Yeah. We've now got green women yeah. and now we've got green wheelchairs, yeah. you know. Part of our, 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 our symbolic commitment, to, you know, our, yeah. our symbol of our commitment to... Uh, well, it's to, what we mean when we say all ages and abilities. Exactly. That, yeah. And hopefully, you know, making sure that it's, it's more than just lip service. Oh, without doubt. With, you know, the, the little green symbol, it's, it's also additional time to be able to make it across. Yep, time yeah. across the road, and uh, and then also the drop curbs, making sure that people can access those whole raft of methods, because we know that, you know, it, it needs to be accessible for everybody. Yeah. Right, this, we're gonna go down the hill here. So you can see in this space really where a whole lane of traffic has been taken out yeah. uh, to install this the sort of the main east-west, what we used to call super, super highways, but they're the sort of, you know, they do some, he this, this will do some pretty heavy lifting in the morning and the evening yeah. in terms of the number of cyclists. But just as we go under this building, on the other side, uh, the other side of the building, I'm going to pull over on the right. Okay. I want to show you something there. 
let's just um, stop here a second. We'll just stop by this, the other side of this plinth here. So while that bridge, um, the tower bridge can't take the trucks over, right. this is a newer bridge okay. where all the trucks come over. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah. But you can see, you might, I don't know if you can quite make it out, bike lanes there have got very sort of uh, very high curbs yes. yeah? yeah to protect the cyclists way from where you've got those big big uh, big trucks yes. because we all know the dangers associated with them the the slower speed limits you know it's again it's a controversial but it's it's sta it stacks up so well like in an urban area if you slow your speed from 30 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour yeah you don't you all you do you don't slow down journey times you just Get, get to the next set of junction, the next junction, next set of lights slightly, you know, you're not slightly slower. Yeah. It actually eases traffic because yeah. you've got less braking distances, so it's, it's smooth. So yeah. that's a no brainer. The, the, the data shows that it actually reduces emissions. Right. But most importantly, where we've done it on our main roads, we've seen a 25% fall in fatal collisions, yeah? 63% yeah. yeah. fall in pedestrian collisions, yeah. yep. In Wales, they've done, they did it as a sort of default. So instead yeah. of arguing, why has that road got to be 30, uh, that 20? Yeah. You say, well, all roads have got to be 30, 20 unless you can make a case, right. yep? Yeah. So it's not saying they're all 20, obviously, that would be crazy. Right. But you've got to make the case for it not to be 20 rather than making it the case to be 20. Right. Right. And that pivot has resulted so far in, I think, a, well, my memory serves great, 32% fall in collisions yeah. and a, um, 32% falling collisions, and uh, even the, the, the insurance companies are reporting today a 20% fall in their costs. So actually it'll save you money, on, hopefully in the long run, yeah. it'll save money on car insurance too. Yeah. Really is, a, it's a no brainer in my view. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is there's a massive super sewer being dug through London. Okay. You know, we, we were really fortunate that back in the Victorian era, yeah. Uh, Joseph Bazalget, I think his name was, put in the sewage system that stopped everyone getting cholera. Right. But as the cities grow, we need to put in a new, uh, you know, new sewer thing. So there's a big tunnel being dug, massive super sewer flowing through the city, which has so far, I think, have been about six or seven years of work. Yeah. This is one of the main drilling sites. Right. And um, because of that, the bike lanes have been, it's taken out the space. You can see it's taken out the space. So for the last, but we've worked with them when you're doing these major, major construction projects that you can do. It's actually, yeah. how can we, it's got to be some flexibility because they move boards, things come in, digging machines come in, etc. Yeah. But you can see what's happened is the bike lanes, the, all this is temporary infrastructure, but it's been here for seven years. Yeah. So the buses go, the bikes go up that way, but very soon we'll reopen up the lane. The lane goes all the way along uh, the, the front of the river here, yeah. Yeah. down to Big Ben. Uh, and then back up this way. Um, and then that will then join up and connect up on the, on, the, on the top side. I was wondering about that. I rode to Big Ben and I rode yep. down the mall. Yeah. And I, so I had to do this, this uh, it, exactly. little so this detour. Is, this so, is, it's, yeah. it's annoying, but they've done a good job in actually yeah. working with us. I mean, this, um, is, this is a really high quality alternative. Exactly, you know, so, with lights, yes. with labeled, yes. and, uh, and you know, it's, it's really helped the safety because you know, you, there's no point having this bike lane. It just stops, ditches yeah. you out here where you've got big vehicles coming left, right, and center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. You see on there, there's the little crest, yeah. yep. Yeah. That, and then you look behind you, and you see here, they're the red lines, yeah. yep. So the, uh, the crest indicates that this is part of the city of London, yep, because that's the crest of the city of London, one of the 30, uh, 32 different local authorities we've got in London. That, that red road is a TfL mayoral control road, yep. So one of the challenges we face in London is the fact that there are over 33 different highway authorities all responsible for the road network. So to make any changes on these roads, it's down to the City of London. So they're down to it. If you do it over there, it's Hackney's. If you do it down there, it's Westminster's. Yeah. And then the roads that we control are only 5% of London's roads, oh, which, really? is, yeah, which is the, the, the main strategic highways. Uh, yep. So to mesh together the sort of network that we've just been riding, yeah. some of those have been the borough roads, some of them have been TfL roads, yep. And so there's this, you know, to do all of this, it's, it, it requires negotiation and the, the diplomacy and the politics, yeah. because each one of the boroughs has got a different locally elected government, yeah. yep. Yeah. 
have got their own political views, their own needs to serve their communities, different budgetary, financial aspects, etc. So that makes, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it certainly adds to the challenge right. of this job. <laughs> Well, it sounds like that this is as good a spot as any to say goodbye uh, because we're right at the, the cusp of uh, you know, going into the city of London. Exactly. Of London We've got uh, the little red marking there for TFL. And uh, uh, Will Norman, thank you so much for taking me on this uh, ride. It, it's just an absolute pleasure. Oh, absolute pleasure. Again. Really yeah. nice to see you, John. I'm so glad I could actually show you some of the stuff we talked about last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, everybody, hope you enjoyed this ride with Will Norman. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment, share it with a friend. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscription button down below. And again, Will Norman, thank you so much. Thanks, John. All right. Cheers, everyone. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.